Hi, I'm Laurie Brown. Thank you for seeking out PonderCast. We are an independent podcast, which means that the support we receive is solely from our listeners, either by a one-time donation on our website at pondercast.ca or with a small monthly donation through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash pondercast. The work we do here, we make to help support you. If you want to support us, please think about a monthly donation. Okay, let's ponder cast. Give us this day our daily habits. Yes, well, your daily habits have changed along with everything else since March, since COVID. The day-to-day now, since March, feels both new and relentlessly not new. In case you've forgotten, let's go back to the before life and have a review P. The kids. Time to get up. Shower. Radio. The kids. School. Come on. Coffee. Breakfast. The kids. Get in the car. Foot on brake. Seatbelt. Ignition. Rearview mirror. Reverse. Gas. Go. We have a kind of swagger as we wheel into our own driveway, as we weave through the office to our cubicle. This familiarity with navigation through our city, our ease with our daily routine, it actually, it feels like intelligence. Habits like this breed a kind of self-confidence. They make us feel smart. All those things we've done so often and have streamlined down to efficient, deft procedures, done with ease, with a minimal amount of thought, they lull us into the belief that we know what we're doing. But, say, take an invisible virus that can kill you and release that into the air you breathe and watch All those smooth moves evaporate, and with them goes ease, confidence, and the sense that we know the world around us. Unsure, doubting, confused, anxious, and this is just at the grocery store, something that used to be so familiar, such a familiar habit that we could pretty much do it in our sleep. So COVID has made us all feel stupid. They say the sign of wisdom is what you choose to do when you don't know what to do. Is your wisdom showing up? (laughs) I'm not feeling it as wisdom, that's for sure. But I do know that I'm much more conscious about everything. And that includes looking at how my days played out before. I am a creature of habit, knowing what to do next, hepped up on muscle memory and the familiar choreography of the day. I spin with precision, parking in my spot like a pro every single time. There's a warm haze of knowing that blankets my world, rough edges worn away by the thousands of times I have walked the path to my front door all 
the accumulated information about that cement walk, cracked and heaved by the habits of trees, I never trip. I never even look down. My key finds the lock the first time, while my mind is already inside, in the kitchen, composing a meal. My habits protect me, like daily payments on a fantasy insurance policy, promising to keep the random world far away from my door. The blanket of familiar is heavy, a felted buffer that deadens the real world. I am packed and wrapped in a padded maze of my habits. They have made my world too small, too precious. My solo circle dance of days is too tight. I must trade my blanket for a boat, for I have forgotten how to float in the world. Do you seem to retreat and then advance in your life? Falling back into the habits of familiarity when the going gets rough out there, and then, after you've replenished yourself, charging out again into new territory? Our approach to life can feel a bit like a military operation. We need both. Because after a while, our habits turn from bringing relief to bringing boredom and then suffocation. I think many of us are at that bewildering point in our COVID experience, yes, because our old instincts of wanting to change things up and charge again are paralyzed by the reality we can't, either by decree or fear. I keep receiving signals from my mind and body to get back out there, advance, advance, back out into the world of unknowns and unpredictability, adventures, revelations, and disappointment, and challenge, and failure. To truly float in the world, we need to feel both lost and found. We are so strange. And what does dropping that blanket of comfortable habits feel like? Well, here's something uncomfortable for you to slip into when your world feels too predictable. Step out of the house and deliberately leave your phone on the kitchen table. Head out into the city without knowing how to get to your destination and talk to a stranger and ask for help. It's slightly terrifying But in these sink-or-swim days, maybe that's a skill we need to brush up on. Change your plans for no plans. Drop assumptions. Abandon expectations. Feel the fear of the unknown side by side with the exhilaration of noticing you are truly awake and floating in the world again.
Is there such a thing as an, an advanced form of habitry? Is there such a word as habitry? When habits get out of hand and they take over our lives, obsession, obsessive compulsion, or would you call it addiction? We move from habit to habit in obsessive ways. Think about the the new exercise regime that takes over your life, or the new approach to food, slow eating, fast eating, vegan, keto, the binging of anything, alcohol, TV, shopping, gambling, drugs, eating. We move from obsession to obsession looking for comfort, like like we're collecting trading cards, hoping to convince ourselves that our world is not random, that we are in control. We are creatures of habit who love to be surprised, to be proven wrong. We are creatures of habit who are drawn like moths to a flame for the new and improved, to the unexplained and the unsolved. We are creatures of habit who live surrounded by mystery, sitting in our favorite chair, drinking from our favorite mug, in the middle of a pandemic, still needing to believe that we know what will happen next. What strange creatures we are.